Hey everyone, my name is Mike Vaughn. Uh, I'm a writer at Geek Vibes Nation, and I'm also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Strange Cinema. And I'm Dylan Gonzalez. I am a senior critic for Geek Vibes Nation and also a co-host of the Home Dance Film Festival podcast. And welcome to a new Video Attic new release roundup. As always, we have a lot of really great, uh, amazing titles. But before we get into that, um, we have another giveaway. So... Uh, this time it is um, tr uh, the Lost World. Um, it's the uh, new um, the Blu-ray, and uh, we are giving out a two digital copies. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, it's really simple. All you need to do is um, leave a comment below and tell us um, what we talked about, what you're most excited for, and. That's it. You'll be eligible to win. Um, so just to note, this is just the digital codes. This is not the actual uh, movie. I just showed that to give you an idea, have a little visual. Um, so uh, just the digital code. But uh, if you're interested in winning that, uh, that is um, how you do it. Just leave a comment and it's that easy. So uh, with yeah. that, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, with to Dylan and we're gonna get this party started awesome so yeah uh anyone who's like excited about dinosaurs they need to enter this contest because it's very exciting and moving on to a different form of creatures uh I am going for the Screen Factory upcoming 4k release of Dog Soldiers mm. uh from director Neil Marshall which is a title that I've had on my like like list of you forever and i've always wanted to see this and i've kept putting it off and now i've finally been able to see it um this does not come with uh reversible art but it uh has uh both a blu-ray and 4k single disc on each side no overlapping discs so uh luckily no scratches on the disc it, it played through very well and so we're all clear on that uh so neil, neil marshall is a director who he, he's had an interesting career. He started off with a lot of promise, and uh, especially with this film. And he made one of my favorite horror films of all time, which is The Descent. And I even have a soft spot for the crazy epic that is Doomsday. So uh, I'm, I am a fan of his work. And uh, so finally getting to see this, I did really enjoy this movie. Um, just kind of, it's kind of a very simple premise. It involves a bunch of soldiers in like the Scottish uh, like countryside who are on like a training mission and they come across some uh, werewolf-like creatures. They end up in a house trying to basically survive an attack uh, from these uh, werewolves that are kind of acting kind of like soldiers themselves and sh dog soldiers uh, that are like attacking the house and just really uh, just picking off people one by one. So it's a really, it's not a complex movie by any means, but it's a really satisfying movie, probably because there are a lot of like practical special effects utilized in this movie. They don't try to rely too much on like digital effects. There's like, some might, might kind of like smirk at some of the werewolf designs, but like they're really cool. And it's like that throwback special effects of just like, uh, like puppets and like makeup and like all kinds of like, like I said practical effects it just it's really different than like a lot of modern movies that just like with CGI like a werewolf and like kind of like they did on like Cursed which I talked about a couple weeks ago which was only a couple years after that like there's a major difference between like whenever they would have the practice like the practical suit and like the digital and because especially digital in the mid 2000s it doesn't always hold up but these it holds up pretty well um, it's a lot of fun there's a lot of great um performers in here um uh, uh liam cunningham who plays sir davos on the game of thrones show um uh there is i can't remember his name but it's the guy who plays uh alfred on gotham mm -hmm. like yeah. the canceled show or it ran for five seasons but on that show um and just a lot of other great uh performers so like i said i've never seen this movie before and this 4k from everything I've heard, the Blu-ray did not look great that was previous released because I think there's a lot of limitations to this source material, especially because I think there's a lot of like kind of like optical effects and everything where some of the 
uh, like shots aren't super crisp and clean, but this new 4K scan of the original camera negative, which is presented in Dolby Vision, it looks really nice. I'm not going to say that it's like super crisp and like like razor sharp like a lot of modern movies are, but I think it kind of captures the intended aesthetic of this movie really well. And there's like this movie takes place a lot in darkness, and so there's like has like really nice deep blacks and like the there's not like a lot of like banding or compression artifacts or anything of that sort. It looks really nice. One thing I will note, um, I, before I got my copy, I had seen on Twitter that um, another reviewer that I follow, uh, the High Def, High Def Disc Digest, I believe, um, he had mentioned that he had heard some popping sounds and like portions of the audio. And I, I've been kind of following his coverage of that. And then whenever I popped in my copy, I also noticed that there were like small pops at like certain points within the movie. So it's not just an isolated thing. I know he reached out to Shout Factory for a response. I have not heard anything back either. So I think they're looking into it, but I think if there is like a issue, they'll probably institute a replacement program, but I have not heard any updates on that. So kind of like keep track of the social media for Screen Factory and see if anything moves on that front. And I'll update if there's any uh, updates in future weeks. But apart from that, like uh, it does sound good, but there's just a few little issues. Um, and this release is stacked with special features. There's two uh, archive commentary tracks, like with the director um, and the producer. And then also there's a new commentary track with the historian. Um, there is a 39 minute new interview with director Neil Marshall. There's a 33 minute piece on just werewolf cinema in general. There's another 24 minute um, new uh, video essay. And then all of the archival features like that were previously on the Blu-ray. So there's like an hour long making of and several other featurettes with like the, about the production design and stuff of that sort. This is really stacked with special features that are all on the Blu-ray. So that is pretty stacked, except for the commentary tracks you can uh, access from the 4K as well. So I think overall Screen Factory did a really nice job with this release, um, besides the elements that I mentioned. Um, I think anyone who has that previous release, I've heard, like I said, that it was not the greatest. So I think this will be a solid upgrade for you. And it's a very entertaining movie. So I'm glad I finally got to check it out. So dog soldiers from screen factory it's a really solid release hey, yeah that sounds awesome and we were talking about this release yeah and what's kind of cool is oh cool yeah um he signed, is that? yeah it was uh a signing he did in la um i have uh Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that I heard the whole, the controversy uh, uh, with this release, uh, the Blu-ray release, I should specify, is um, they uh, tweaked the coloring a little bit also. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, even like Neil Marshall kind of had to get on Twitter and sort of defend how uh screen factory kind of re um colored some of the um like scenes i guess some of like the night scenes maybe had a a um different maybe kind of hue than what it normally did um i'm not sure if that that probably was fixed if possible with this new release i don't know if yeah you heard. uh i'm glad you mentioned that um i will say that screen factory actually did not overview this transfer, it's actually, they're using the transfer from a second site who's releasing this overseas, who, do, who do, does a lot of great work. So they did the like restoration and scan of the 4K negative and Dolby Vision grading and Screen Factory is using that uh, transfer on this disc. So I think it's probably, like I said, I haven't seen this before, but it, everything looked pretty good to me. Okay, um, yeah, no, that's, that's great. I. Um... I'm definitely I think I'm gonna probably now hold off a little bit and see if there's a replacement program but like that one is for sure like gonna get upgraded um 
So uh, there's really no good segue into my title, but it is um, Murder at Yellowstone City from RLJE. And for us, it's right off, off the top. I'm kind of curious if this was retitled because of Yellowstone, the series. Um, I would not be surprised. <laughs> uh, I, I've never, full disclosure, I've never seen the series. Everybody loves it. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know... I'll say politely that it doesn't look like it's maybe my cup of tea, but um, let's check this out. We got a really nice slip cover. Um, and I don't know if you can see this, but it's like in, like it's embossed, which I always think is really cool. Um, and uh, so here, and then um, there are some features, which is really nice. Um, so uh, I know we were talking a little bit about this movie before we started recording, but yeah. Um, so, okay. The movie um, literally starts out with a bang, right? And I think it kind of is uh, enticing enough to sort of draw me into it. Um, But yeah, it it wasn't that great. But so um, the plot basically is a guy, um, you know, finds gold and then is later murdered. And then the movie kind of builds the mystery around um, who did it. Like there's a suspect, but... We kind of know he didn't do it, so um, it, it's just kind of figuring out who did it and how to clear this innocent man of of the crime. And um, so, I want to start off with some good things. The production design, uh, especially for a lower budget movie, is actually really um, solid. Um, the cinematography is also really excellent. Um, they really captured a nice mood and feel with this movie. Like there's a lot of like use of natural lighting, a lot of like, um, like really warm, um, colors to kind of give it this, um, I don't know. It it definitely gives it a, a bigger budget look on what I assume was probably a very modest budget. Um, but yeah, so this movie has a lot of issues, but I think the major one for me is pacing. Um, this movie clocks in at two hours and six minutes, and frankly, it doesn't really need to be that long. <laughs> um, no, it there, does not. Yeah, there's. Um, I appreciate the fact that they do try to um, give you a lot of really good character development. It was interesting because there was um, a few characters that I'm trying to be really careful because I don't want to spoil, but there was one character that actually gets killed, and I was actually pretty surprised. Um, that they they killed that person off but um yeah it, it's just it's very sluggish and there's times when i think i wanted it to just pick up the pace like i i think there were some interesting elements uh going on but it just was sort of drugged down by this really like bloated plot um then you have some clunky dialogue that I think tries way too hard to be deep and philosophical, but just comes off sort of unintentionally funny. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that it was trying to really be like um, deep and philosophical and interesting. I just felt like it was trying way too hard to be like a Coen Brothers movie. And you know, you, you you see somebody like trying that often and it, it's so hard to replicate that particular like style. Um, so it's not bad. Um, I think the performances are, are for the most part pretty solid. Um, I have to give a shout out to Lou Temple. I love him. Uh, he, I met him and he was one of the sweetest guys you'd ever want to meet. Um, uh, I think that was at a convention, um, gosh, maybe like 10 years ago. But yeah, he was was very nice. And so it's always fun to see him pop up in things like this. This is like, uh, this is definitely something that he would would be into. Like he does a lot of these Westerns and stuff. So um, yeah, it's all right. Um, the um, overall pre- presentation uh, is really good. Um, this looks great in 1080p. Um, like I said, visually, the movie is um, on point, even if the maybe the story isn't. Um, and you do get a nice um, transfer with that. And um, 
This does have deleted scenes, uh, a making up feature and an audio commentary track. So uh, it is nice because if you do enjoy this movie, you do get a little more bang for your buck. So um, solid um, presentation and, and release the movie. It's all right. Yeah. What what are you gonna do? I feel like you said the acting was mostly okay, but I do feel like the bigger name stars like like Gabriel Byrne and Richard Richard Dreyfus were kind of just like, all right, I'm here kind of for my paycheck, mm -hmm. and you can have my name. I'm here for the paycheck, and that's they're just kind of phoning it in. And I was just like, yeah, I get it, but it it yeah. it wasn't the yeah. most exciting film. Yeah, it's definitely it's such a shame because I think that inherently the premise is not amazingly uh special but I, I i think there's enough there for it to be pretty interesting like i i do like a sort of uh inherently compelling mystery at the heart of this it's just it gets bogged down in its own kind of i want to say maybe pretentiousness yeah <laughs> uh so yeah okay <laughs> uh i'll just move on to my next one i don't want to keep dragging this movie down um uh, it's another 4k release from screen factory so this is a packed week, week for like shop factory slash screen factory for me and that is the 4k of cat people uh from paul Ooh, schrader nice. yes so i was another one i've had high on my list to watch um and unlike dog soldiers this one does come with double-sided cover art um this is Mm. normal cover art but then it also you have this underneath yes um and but similar to dog soldiers once again i this is my first time seeing this but uh from what i have heard the the previous uh blu-ray release was pretty poor and like i saw whenever this was announced that people were like yes finally maybe this will look good because it's the previous blu-ray was like one of the like weakest one on like the blu-ray format because i think it was like really artificially sharpened and just like lost a lot of its filmic qualities so i think people who are like um were disappointed by that blu-ray release should be very pleased by this because i felt that this had a very filmic uh presentation um it's not been sharpened um it does come from a new 4k scan of the original camera negative mm -hmm. um and is presented in dolby vision um and uh it really looks nice um it has uh pretty like solid colors throughout it has like some like there's also a lot of uh nighttime scenes in this one so like there are like a lot of like deep bl like black levels um once again not a lot of banding not a lot of like compression artifacts it holds up really nicely like a lot of fine shadow detail which is really nice especially when you see see like the kitties emerging from like the shadows and stuff and you can really like see their full shape as they're like coming out it's really nice um so this looks really nice has excellent like film grain that's been like resolved really well um and the audio sounds really good too uh no issues detected here it comes with a five dts 5.1 and stereo soundtrack um and for those who haven't seen this this is a uh remake of a classic Val Luton film <laughs> but Very different. Uh, yeah in in name only I'm pretty much uh, just because Paul Schrader does his Paul Schrader thing and uh really goes like into kind of like really sexual awakening type uh stuff that's like more graphic than anything you could get previously um this stars Natasha Kinski um who she plays a young girl who has just recently come to the United States to stay with her brother, uh, played by uh, Malcolm McDowell. Um, and then uh, there suddenly become, like starts to have a, uh, a rash of animal attacks with a black uh, leopard uh, like killing people. And she hooks up with some people at a zoo, uh, played by John, Her or John Hurd and Annette O'Toole. Um, and you kind of learn things about like her and her family's like history and how it ties to, like I said, her sexual awakening and uh, like her, 
she has some really messed up like scenarios with her brother like their dynamic is really interesting to see evolve and Malcolm McDowell plays it with like appropriate like kind of creepiness <laughs> um but it's a really strange like movie but it's like really intriguing and really like uh I don't want to say whimsical whimsical is the wrong word but it's very ethereal <laughs> it's just a very uh the soundtrack like the titular like the like the theme song of the movie is by David Bowie and it's, uh, they used it to such perfect effect in Inglorious Bastards. And I've loved that song ever since I've seen Inglorious Bastards. So I was very excited to hear it within this, but it's nice. They carry that th theme throughout the movie pretty well. And it just kind of creates like a dreamy atmosphere that works uh, really well. Um, I really love like the, like the practical effects. They have some like really like, gnarly makeup effects that look really cool near the end and see i really did enjoy this movie i'm two for two with scream factory this week so far so nice. um really enjoy uh finally seeing cat people um i will say this doesn't have any new special features from what i can tell unlike dog soldiers but they do include all of the legacy special features including a uh like a conversations with paul schrader pretty much all of like the main actors, like Natasha Kinski, Malcolm McDowell, Annette O'Toole, John Hurd, um, with the uh, composer Giorgio Moroder, um, and like a bunch of like TV spots, uh, a piece on the original Cat People by Val Luton. So it's a pretty stacked release as it is. They've just like kind of corrected the mistakes of past transfer and given them a new 4K scan in 4K on a 4K disc, and it's. I really like this disc. I think fans will finally be like content with what they're getting on disc with cat people. So good job for Scream Factory. Yeah, I would have kind of loved to have been in the room while you were watching this because this movie is so extra. I love it. Yeah, um, yeah it's yeah. Um, it is definitely really wild and wildly different from the original film, which is all you know shadow and subtext and they're like how do we go the complete opposite of that mm -hmm. um yeah. but i think it's it's fun because i mean we we have the original that's great mm -hmm. we can always go back and appreciate that but then if you want something a little trashy a little more you know paul schrader um mm -hmm. you know there you go um, yeah so uh speaking of slightly trashy little tawdry Ooh. um my next one um mysterious island of beautiful women uh you know me and you know made for tv movies is one of my love languages so mm -hmm. i was really excited for this um first off let's just show this beautiful package um so there um show you the uh, features and slip cover and this does not come with reversible art but um yeah so this was an interesting movie um i will say uh it, it's certainly i like I, I definitely like movies that you can't really pin it down to a single genre um so this premise is really interesting because it's sort of a maybe recontextualized um like retelling of like lord of the flies almost but then uh when i think about it, it it's also a lot like children of the corn which sounds re like really weird but if you watched it you would kind of get what i was was going with it but yeah, it's um a lot of fun. I will say that I was kind of disappointed that the the first act is very um slow and a little bit sluggish. Um you know, kind of like when I was talking about like um murder at Yellowstone City, the um the pacing is is like pretty awkward. Um like there's plot points that I think could have been um you know, arrived at quicker. There's like um, I do appreciate that they they kind of try to flush out this like world and these characters. Um, some of it I think could have been done a little bit more efficiently, but um, overall, it's a really fun movie. And you know, it's kind of hard to talk about this movie without any spoilers. But I will say there's a really interesting revelation 
that essentially kind of recontextualizes a certain character and you know there kind of changes your whole perception of the movie especially when you watch it again uh like knowing that um again it, it sucks because i had to be super vague but i don't want to spoil it but uh it is pretty interesting i it's certainly not one of my favorites um i think i do kind of like i did uh, like it more after watching it the second time with the, the um, audio commentary track. Um, and, uh, you know, um, Amanda Reyes did an amazing uh, book about made for TV movies. So um, it's her and uh, Kinder Trauma co-founder Lance Vaughn, who no relation to, but is a heck of a nice guy. Um, I'm hoping he and I are going to be doing something this fall together with made for TV movies. It's a little tease for um, upcoming content, but um, yeah, this, um, this was really um, fun, but, but again, very uneven, like even as somebody that like really loves the cheesiness of made for TV movies. And this does have a lot of fun cheese in it. It's just the plot definitely is a little bit uh wonky at times and there's times when i just kind of wanted it to to maybe kick in the full gear mm -hmm. um and it does eventually but but you have to wade through a lot um of i think like tedious plotting to get to to it but yeah it's fun i know this this got a little bit more of a cult following when uh sven Goli um did it on his show a couple years ago so um that's nice that that kind of um helped give it a bigger fan base and now of course it's uh has a nice blu-ray um as far as presentation goes uh at the beginning of the movie there is a title card saying like this is um you know this was a basically difficult movie to uh, work with with um given like the uh film elements so there's some parts that are going to be a little bit inconsistent as far as like the uh, transfer goes um i thought it was overall re a really nice looking uh 2k scan um it, it certainly is probably the best it's um ever gonna look uh i've of course never seen it on any other format but just um you know this ha has a lot of outdoor uh scenes of course so like those really look fantastic um and again it does look you know it does look inconsistent at times but it was not so bad that it took me out of the movie so i thought it was fine um and if you are a fan of this movie um this is probably the best it's gonna get uh as far as like looks go so and and again it's it's really solid i think yeah that seems interesting whenever i saw the title it just reminded me kind of of the love slaves of the amazon which i talked about mm. a couple months ago so i'm just like we're just getting all of like these island women just like <laughs> doing their thing so that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. And again, it is kind of neat because it does like have and and I can't take credit for this because this was what they were talking about in the commentary track. But, uh, you know, they were talking about it having a folk horror flavor to it and rewatching re it. I'm like, yeah, like it, it definitely has that kind of like there's a sort of like deity that they worship. Um, and uh, it, it kind of gives it that like you have these outsiders encroaching on something maybe sacred or religious again i'm I'm being super vague because i don't want to give it away but it, it's 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 a fun time yeah that seems uh like trashy fun i'm all for it <laughs> uh rounding out my uh shout factor releases something very <laughs> different from the two screen factor releases um, this is a childhood favorite. I'll just say that. Uh, it is the new Blu-ray release of Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, <laughs> nice. uh, which I am very excited to own on Blu-ray. I had I did not have the uh, previous Fox Blu-ray release. I My last copy, and I brought it out, is my DVD copy of, mm. uh, from probably the mid-2000s. Oh, nice. uh, so I think they poured over pretty much all the special features for this one. Yeah. But uh, this is the 30th anniversary edition, so a way to make us all feel old. <laughs> um, but I will say what's very exciting about this is they're, they have, do have a new 4K scan and restoration of the original elements for this one, which is really cool. And like I did do 
some comparisons to my DVD edition, which you would think that there would be a big difference, but there's like, there is a sizable difference between the DVD version. Like just like all the colors and everything were pretty faded on the DVD release. And I had watched it a few times before when I owned the DVD, I guess I just didn't really put it in my mind, like how bad the elements were until I saw this new release. And I was like, Oh no, this, this is how it's supposed to look. I will note that if you watch this film and you think that there are like certain issues with like uh, things looking a little blurry or out of focus, I did get uh, concerned in a few spots. So I went back to my DVD and looked and those elements I think are source related because I saw the exact same thing in the original source. Like just some, a lot of times when there's like really fast movement, like there would just be a little bit of blurring, but I think it's probably a limitation of the animation and how they created it so it kind of just like sometimes just feels a little like oh was that a little blurry or out of focus for a second so just keep that in mind like it's not as pristine as modern animation uh, of course uh but for if you remember this is 30 years old and like hand drawn you should forgive it like a little bit of like source anomalies and stuff it does look really great like a lot of the debris been like uh cleaned up and like i said like nice vibrant colors it has a great dts 5.1 soundtrack as well as a like a 2.0 soundtrack as well um or you can listen to it with the commentary which is always cool too uh, as far as special features the only really new special feature is like a five minute new introduction from uh director bill croyer who kind of talks about kind of his intentions with the movie um, along with kind of like showing off some like uh, like early animatics and stuff. So he, it's not just like a talking head, but he does show you off some like really cool early animation. And like, he talks about how this film was one of like the first like cutting edge of like blending 2D animation with some uh, digital animation in like a few points. And like the points that he's like pointed out that were like, early digital animation I was like oh, okay those were the spots where I did see like maybe those qual that quality was like a little lesser than everything else and not as crisp so I was like okay that makes sense as to why maybe it wasn't like as like pinpoint crisp as like some of the other moments um but for those who don't know the movie it's pretty easy to explain it's basically like avatar before avatar it's uh a uh a four it's basically a, a tale of anti-capitalism and like deforestation and everything. Um, a human man gets like shrunk down to size by like, like the fairy people who live in Fern Gully. Like this, uh, the, the girl here, uh, she shrinks him down and kind of teaches him like about the forest and why like that why it's good to communicate with the forest and what it does for the world and everything while all tim curry voices like this smog monster who is like controlling the evil like foresting company who's trying to tear down the rainforest so it's just like a battle of like good versus evil protect the rainforest and that's it like you get some good voice performance you got christian slater just doing his christian slater thing like i said tim curry is like i was reading just i watched this with jessica earlier and she was reading off some imdb trivia that tim carey's vocal performance was so scary the first time he did it he had to come back in and re-record it because it was making children and test screens cry <laughs> so uh but jessica was like didn't work because it still scared me as a child i was like that's just tim curry he's too good at what he does so <laughs> yeah no i mean that i do it, it's funny we were just talking about uh kinder trauma and yeah. like i i have very vivid recollection of like don't they like torture like electrically torture the um baddie character like is there like a yes they do or... yeah play by robin williams mm -hmm. yeah yeah um yeah that uh, see I, it's been probably it's probably been 20 years since i've seen it and i like again i that's pretty traumatizing um <laughs> yeah relive your trauma in high definition <laughs> it's a good yeah. release i'm glad they put it out and like did it just as finely yeah no that sounds awesome um no that, that's a fox title right yes yes i i think they got that from 
Yeah, there is a 20th century logo beforehand, mm. and they probably got it from like an MGM deal, if I'm guessing. But oh, okay. I don't know. But yeah, I'm as long as someone got it, I'm happy. And like I said, they did they did it justice. And so shout out to Shout Factory, they did a nice job with this. Um, uh, and it's only like 76 minutes long, so it doesn't overstay its welcome too. So it's like it gets in and gets out. No, that's awesome. I I should probably like maybe get that for my niece. Uh, I don't know if she's ever seen it, yeah. um, but we can scar her too, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah, this is uh, very different and I don't know how to segue into that, but this is uh, Samson and the seven miracles of the world. Um, and uh, this is actually a pretty interesting release, um, but let I'll show off the packaging first. Um, this does have reversible art as well. Um, so here is the other cover. Oh, that's quite a cover. Right? That is, uh, <laughs> that's a little more, uh, it, it's definitely not that kind of movie, um, <laughs> we'll just say. Um, <laughs> Sadly. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, it's kind of interesting because um, the other week that I, I was talking about um, the film detective and how I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't have like the Italian cut and just the, the AIP cut. Well, um, the uh, Kino has you covered because it um, I'm struggling to get this back in. <laughs> it does have um, the Italian cut and the AIP cut. Um, okay. So if you kind of want to see both um, or you're a completist like us, you know, it's just nice to have that in one packaging. Um, so as for the movie itself, um, it's a pretty fun time. If you, I kind of know what I'm getting with these movies. It's like, there's a kind of like sword and sandal sort of movies. Um, this has, um, former uh, Tarzan actor um, Gordon Scott playing Samson and it has a lot of nice uh, action set pieces and um, it actually has a really big lavish look because uh, it used um, old set pieces from other productions. Um, this was like something that uh, famously like Roger Corman would do to give his like low budget movies uh, a much bigger a grandiose kind of uh, feel. Um, and it's very cheesy. Like there's uh, a scene that I, I took a note of that I, I really wanted to mention, which was uh, Samson is battling this lion and it's clearly a fake lion. And it's like expression is like this. It's just like his eyes are like bugged out and it's hilarious. I wish I could put a still up from that. Um, maybe, you know, maybe I'll ask our editor to see if he can pop that up just to show mm -hmm how ridiculous and hilarious this is but um that I, I took a note of that because it, it kind of like um it gives you an idea of like what this movie is it's very cheesy it's very low budget but it does have like um there's a flair to it like that i think a lot of these like italian productions have um they do not uh look down on genre cinema like this is taken very seriously, but it is intentionally at times very tongue in cheek. Um, and, you know, like any good Samson movie, there's some light fetish uh, sequences of whipping. Um, like there's times when you're like, oh, I mean, that's, we're going into a lot of detail with this. So it seems like maybe the director had a thing for that, which we're not judging here. Um, as long as it's consenting, it's fine. Uh, no kink shaming here, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's all kind of part and parcel with these movies, and it's a lot of fun. Um, there, I will say, um, I feel like I should mention that some of the the racial stereotypes are cringy, uh, as you probably can imagine um, from just looking at the cover and the you know there's. So uh, if that's a non-starter for you, I completely understand, but that's just to let uh, anybody know beforehand. Um, it, it wasn't so cringy that I couldn't like just like look past it and enjoy the movie, but I think it is still worth kind of mentioning. So 
a really fun movie. Um, now this, um, I it doesn't say if it's a new two scan. Oh wow, it doesn't say it's a new two K scan. Um, that's hard to say. Um, but uh, it look kind. Of, it looks like it. I mean, the colors are really. Uh, you know, they really do pop. I mean, again, it's like these big garish kind of uh, Italian um, productions. So you do have a lot of like garish colors at times. And I think this uh, restoration really kind of nails that um, like wonderful like look. Um, it's a little bit grainy at times, but not overly so. And again, everything looks really crisp and clean um there's a little bit of artifacts uh and a little bit of scratches but nothing that i think um like ever really took me out of the movie so across the board it looks really nice i mean you know when when um kino does a title i always expect a lot from them and they usually always deliver so this is like um Certainly uh, no exception. Um, this does have a, a commentary track um, just on the AIP cut. Uh, and as I say, that there are both cuts uh, in this um, on this disc. So, and then it is just the one disc with both uh, the cuts on it. Oh, awesome. Uh, that sounds like whenever I'm in a sword and sandal mood, I guess I'll have to check that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a fun time. Awesome. Uh, I I gotta admit, I have a soft spot for this next title. I was very excited to get this <laughs> in. Um, this was the 80s classic, uh, Dirty Dancing on 4K. Uh, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, you gotta love it. <laughs> if not, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> um, I, first, I really like this cover. It's hard to like describe it, but it has kind of like this like shiny, like, glean here where it's like being like matted here mm -hmm. uh it's, it looks really nice so yeah there um so this is the 35th anniversary edition no double-sided art which does not surprise me because it's a Lionsgate release and they're not a boutique label so but uh this does come with a new 4k disc um I have a sneaking suspicion this was probably the same 4k disc that was released last year exclusively at Best Buy in a Steelbook, but mm -hmm. I do not have that release to compare it. Um, I will just say um, this is a 4K disc. Um, it comes in Dolby Vision. It comes with Dolby Atmos audio, the 5.1 audio, and the original 2.0 stereo audio. So you have choices depending on if you want like more like advanced multi-channel audio or just the original stereo mix, which... I listened to this in Dolby Atmos and it sounded really great, especially with all those like, this has a banger soundtrack of 80s <laughs> tunes and like they sounded great coming through and like immersing my room in sound. It was great. Um, I don't think I really have to like describe this movie in too much detail for most people. I will just say that like Jennifer Grey plays Baby. Uh, that's what her family calls her. Uh, she goes with her family to a like kind of like a basically like a summer camp for family, like a retreat. Um, and Patrick Swayze, uh, he's part of like this uh, group uh, that are like are hired for like entertainment. Um, and it's kind of like their unlikely romance, uh, like between like uh, the two, while there's also like a lot of really dramatic stuff happening in the background, some <laughs> involving like uh, like uh, abortion and stuff with like a friend. And so this movie can get pretty harrowing at times for like, if you just think like dirty dancing, oh, that's romantic. And so it's like, no, there's some real stuff going on, like class dynamics and like uh, like uh, availability of like, uh, uh, like female healthcare and stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff going on in this one, but it's also a really romantic movie with like dancing and like great music. I really love it. Um, this was only like my third time watching this, I believe. I first watched it like about like eight or nine years ago with my now wife, Jessica. Uh, she was surprised I'd never seen it. I'd always wanted to. And now it's just kind of become one that we revisit every few years. So it was great revisiting it in 4K because I have to say it was a huge upgrade from that old DVD that um, she used to have. So it, it was a lot of fun. Um, this comes uh, with a audio or a couple audio commentary tracks. 
um, as well as a host of special features, um, uh, like just the different featurettes and interviews. There's a piece on Patrick Swayze. There's some music, like three music videos. Um, this has like, it's a pretty stacked release and I think that they did a really good job with this 35th anniversary release. So if you missed out on the previous Best Buy Steelbook, um, now you can you can own it in 4k and i think it looks really nice it has like really vibrant colors like really dark black levels um it just looks really nice they like the film grain hasn't been removed it looks like a film which is always what we advocate for here so it's a really great release if you love this movie which it's a classic so why wouldn't you i have never actually seen this um which is so funny because... michael <laughs> huh michael come on <laughs> I know, right? It's so funny because like um I think like my mom and sister watch watch this probably a hundred times. Um but uh you know this movie though you have to be really careful with the placement of the movie because nobody puts baby in the corner. Mm. <laughs> yep. All right. No more words needed. Well, I was sitting on that one for a while, so <laughs> um <laughs> anyways um oh yeah again no great way to segue into this but this is um the south park the um 24th season um this uh is kind of wild because um this is only four episodes on here um oh really yeah it's the um pandemic special and then um there's like some like um the um park hue vaccination special um so uh i i'm like in a very complicated relationship with south park these days um i used to love them and now i'm a little bit divided on some of the later stuff um which is really divisive and i think it's maybe divisive just to be provocateurs and that that never used to be how um the creators um you know uh used to operate um now it kind of just feels like the family guy like 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 lets it push all the buttons to see what uh gets headlines and i'm not going to get on my soapbox about it but um just to say i went into this um with my expectations at a certain level and uh you know i will say that um it is definitely a return i think to um the south park that i really enjoy um the writing is a little bit hit or miss um but i like how epic the storytelling is um like when they do this kind of long form um so sort of storytelling um like um oh gosh i'm trying to think what the thing that they did like adventure land or oh yeah um, yeah something like that um mm -hmm. like uh i i did like that for you know maybe that was a little bit stretched too stretched out but i mean i do like when they kind of take this long form storytelling which they've been kind of playing with um over the last couple years um i think like they kind of dropped it pretty notoriously um but yeah, it's um it's a really interesting like time capsule of COVID and you know ha the anxiety I guess of being around a, being a generation that has to navigate um a global pandemic when we're the first generation since I guess the 20s that really had something this like um like massive and widespread. So um I I think that uh again hit or miss but I think uh, it doesn't overstay its welcome, which I like. Um, there are some really great gags that I thought was definitely like so like old school South Park that I really enjoyed. Um, again, did it all work for me? No. Um, did it work overall as a whole? I think yes. Like this got a very kind of lukewarm response um, on like Rotten Tomatoes, and I can kind of understand why. Um, you know, it does kind of have that like provocateur for the sake of it uh, element that i don't like but yeah i think overall it's it's fine um are you in the south park have you seen these oh i i love south park and i 
Um, the only one I think I've seen from that season was the original Pandemic special, mm -hmm. which I think they put on HBO Max, which I watched with Jessica. But I think the rest of the ep episodes may have been like Paramount Plus exclusives or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, or like Comedy Central, and I just never got around to watching them. So I am glad to finally have these. I just remember that, I know you said there's, there's like four episodes, but they, these are all just like longer tales, right? Like they, they're longer mm -hmm. episodes, but there's fewer of them. Am I correct? Yeah. They just do different epic storylines, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so uh, I remember whenever I watched the pandemic special, there was a lot that I found funny. Uh, there, It was a little overly long, but like, mostly it's a hit for me and i i'm a long time fan of south park even its newer seasons there's a lot of stuff i really like in it yeah and i try like i try not to like judge it with some some of their like um crappier takes i guess is a, a nicer way to put it than what i was gonna say um <laughs> but uh yeah i you know just taking taking that out of it i try to just watch it with fresh eyes and a clean slate and yeah again i i over overall liked it not perfect but um you know it's definitely better than um i think it was like what was the member berry season and then they had like yeah. that was like 22 i believe yeah, yeah. See, and then the season uh after that was also pretty rocky where they were trying to do the integrity farms um mm -hmm. thing yeah which like graded on me to no end. But anyways, um, yeah, it's it's a nice presentation. Um, and I will say that um, it, it's always kind of fun to see this animation in like really high, high def quality. Like um, it really does pop. Um, so it kind of actually makes me want to maybe go back and get some of the older seasons um, on Blu-ray as well. But um you know, my hope is that they maybe do like a box set sometime. So I'm also maybe holding out for that. But uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty solid. And I think uh, everyone should definitely check it out. Yeah, sorry. I like I have four of these. Like, here's the first one, like seasons one through five box set. Oh, OK, nice. So I, I got that up through season 20. Um, so they're like that. And here's the like six through ten so uh they've done like small box sets like of five seasons each so i kind of hope that they continue that with like after they release the next season that they'll do another big box set of 21 through 25 but we shall see um but no that uh no thanks for the the info that's awesome i'll have to to look to look out for those yeah and i know this is like a sidetrack i'll try to keep this brief but like i i was very excited when those came out because it was very like inexpensive it was like 40 bucks for like the five seasons together which isn't bad all things no. considering like considering that this itself is like 20 ish dollars 20 to 25 dollars so i think it's a pretty good value for whenever they do do those box sets yeah uh yeah i used to the collect the seasons when they were out on dvd and i probably spent like twice that so oh yeah i sold so <laughs> many of those dvds after i, I, was, mm -hmm. I was like well I'm, i want them on blu-ray so that's <laughs> that's the life of a collector that's what we do yeah <laughs> anyway um so okay you know this is just like i do this every like week or two weeks um i have a music documentary for us of course um, it is uh, Murder in the Front Row from MBD Entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, it's the story of the San Francisco Bay thrash metal stuff. So before I get into stuff, I would just say, I love this movie. I'm not a fan of this packaging. So like a, a little bit of shame on MBD. I don't know what's going on. This is a DVD size packaging for a Blu-ray, mm -hmm. which that throws off my whole collection. What are you doing to me? <laughs> and there's nothing on the spine. So like... Yeah how much like i mean i can do the other side but it's facing the wrong way i don't like it um <laughs> i i have standards okay um uh, but yeah you uh slip this off um and it's the same underneath uh back and you unfold it and it's so it's like gatefold mm -hmm. so you have the disc here and some like pictures here 
So overall, like if this was just Blu-ray size, but still the same packaging, I'd be much more like lenient on it. But DVD size packaging for Blu-rays, I'm not, I'm not a fan. So please, please MVD, don't do this again to me. Um, but it's worth it because I did like this movie. I will just say, um, people who have like tracked this, they kind of get a sense of my own personal music taste. But I would just say I am not the biggest fan of thrash metal music but <laughs> i do i do like some some of it like i do like like metallica is heavily featured in this and i do like metallica especially i like the documentary metallica some kind of monster uh that i watched like probably 12 years ago that i really liked. um but this is really interesting it's like a nice like pretty like microcosm portrait of thrash metal at this time um, it has like a lot of, like I said, the members of Metallica, members of Anthrax, Slayer, Megadeth, Exodus, Possessed, uh, Violence, uh, Death Angel. There's a mm. ton of like great people in here talking about like their lives around this time, like in like the early 1980s, whenever things were like developing and like it kind of, mostly it follows like, exodus like members of exodus testament and metallica and then like how it like evolved some of them like evolved into like slayer and megadeth and all that stuff so if i'm getting any of these like specifics wrong to like metalheads i'm so sorry i i tried to keep track of like who's and what and, yeah so like don't <laughs> don't attack me i'm i am a novice when it comes to metal i just know like very basics of stuff but it's a really fascinating documentary of just like this scene and like just seeing like why some bands took off, like how their like lifestyle impacted certain things. Like just a lot of these people are very destructive, uh, like and like, but also like once you were in the scene, like you were like family basically, basically. And like they had like a very like it's almost kind of quaint these days, like that they're so lying in the sand, but like no posers policy and just like how they treated people who were like pretend like i would probably be a poser so like death to posers i understand um but uh it's just a really interesting documentary like if you're a metal fan or if you just want to get kind of like more of like a basic foundation of the like landscape i think uh murder in the front row is definitely a good like primer and like just a just as like an aside, the narrator of this is a comedian I love, Brian Posehn, who's like a huge yeah. metalhead. So you would expect him to talk about this. And he like has like a lot of great like comments on this and like really guides you through this process of like knowing about these bands and gives a little bit of personal insight too. Like talks about his own experiences. Like I was at this show and like it changed my life and stuff like that. So if if you're a fan of music documentaries or metal music uh, specifically, Murder in the Front Row, like this Blu-ray, it looks good, sounds great. And there's like another, I think I already got 28 more unused clips from the movie included here, which are all about like a minute to three minutes long. So that's like another like 45 minutes of footage that's not in the movie. So uh, Murder in the Front Row, it's a really great music documentary. Nice. Um... Yeah, no, that sounds awesome. Um, it's a little bit of maybe um, not like a music documentary, but when you said Metallica and documentary, it also made me think of the Paradise Lost movies. Have you seen those? Uh, I have not, but I've heard of them. <sighs> For shame. Uh, they're so good. Um, <laughs> you haven't seen Dirty Dancing. I haven't seen the Paradise Lost movies. Well, yeah, so we we both, yeah, we both should have like a, a cultural exchange there. Um, yeah. But no, that sounds awesome. I definitely, um, it is a subject that I don't know a great deal about. Um, it's kind of funny when you mentioned Death Angel, because I actually had talked to some some of the members um, from that, from, from them um, a while ago um for a project that that kind of never panned out but they were like really nice so that was that's kind of cool um oh, cool. so yeah my next one uh is a kind of artsy fartsy film and we like those here um yeah apples 
um, from Kino and Cohen Media Group. And so um, this one was really interesting. Um, and I, I've seen a lot of love for this movie. I, I'm kind of like a little lukewarm on it, but I will say um, the premise is pretty interesting. Uh, in the near future, there's an unknown virus that causes some people to lose their memory. Um, and so this is basically a black comedy drama that um, really explores the question of identity and humanity, um, like how your um, past experiences kind of create the fabric of you as an individual and, and as a person. And I think uh, exploring those themes, it does a really great job. Um, it is a really, it, it, it's a movie that didn't hook me right away. But the more I got into it, the more um, I was really invested and engaged in this film. Uh, it is so beautifully shot. Like, there are definitely some just stunning, ethereal, um, like, photography that really, I think, nails the kind of um, quirky but really powerful um, tone that it balances. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, it And the humor is very deadpan which i i love that and um i think the characters also really make it uh easy to kind of get uh firmly on their side um and i i kind of found it to maybe be sort of like a sort of take on navigating a post covid world whether or not like this was conceived during the pandemic or not i'm not really sure um uh, actually, surprisingly, it premiered before COVID. It premiered in 2019. Oh, okay. Um, okay. It's just coincidental that it applies so much to current day. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah it, it definitely feels, you know, way more relevant uh, today. Um, and uh, if there's one thing that I had to say uh, negatively about it is I thought the world building could be a little bit richer, a little bit more interesting. Um, like there's, it's not that they don't do any world building. I just think that they could have maybe t taken that a little bit farther. Um, but I mean, that's just, you know, a little uh, negative. I think overall it's a really fun um very heartwarming, really um, satisfying film. Um, it, it just, it definitely like, I, I like kind of a cerebral take on um, science fiction and like identity. And it's very much um, like akin to like Blade Runner, although not as like flashy, I guess. Um, but it does kind of explore this meaning of like, you know, what does it mean to be a person? Is it our lived memories and experiences? Um, is it the um, bonds that we form? Um, like our main protagonist meets a woman and they fought, they form this really great relationship. And yeah, it, it's, it's like, I, I kind of liked how it presented that message and it didn't really give you easy answers, which I also appreciated. Um, and uh, you seen this, right? What'd you think of it? Yeah, I really like it. I was very excited to check it out because I know that he's a protege of Yorgos Lanthimos who, who mm -hmm. did uh, like The Favorite or The Lobster. Um, and I, I think it's like, a, I can understand some of your criticisms. I think it was very centered on this one like person's experience rather than like looking at the like larger world. But I overall, I thought it was a very strong film. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I overall really liked it. It's just, you know, I think it was just one of my like little nitpicks, maybe that like, it could have like, I think they could have even went a little bit further with the satire too. But um, yeah, it's good. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely like when we talk about these titles that like, I always get really excited about and I know you do too, when we can present something to, to um, people that might this might not be on their radar because it's not like a big, huge Marvel release or something. And and we like those too, but, um, you know, it's these like quieter um, little indie movies that I think are worth really um, 
like blasting out there. So, absolutely. Um, kind of along those same lines, I'm going to talk about a pair of movies uh, from Unearthed Films. And I just got to say, I've been kind of anticipating this conversation because if I recall correctly, I looked at your letterbox because I was researching this movie. And I'm pretty sure you gave one of these half a star. And <laughs> we, we shall uh, go from there. Um, the first one is the old man movie. Mm -hmm. And the other is Dr. Lamb. And I saw that look on your face that you remember. <laughs> the old man movie yeah well i'm having some ptsd because i'm like i hate like i try not to be like this but there's times when if i could hit a movie and, and i'm not advocating violence whatsoever but just in the abstract if i could just punch a movie in the face it would be this movie but interesting um we'll, we'll get back to that in just a second let me show this uh cover art, art a little bit more so yeah there's this mm. you have the back uh, and slip cover. So it's the same artwork, uh, no double sided artwork, and just here. Um, so, yeah, so I guess we're going to have, you're going to probably fight me, but I love this movie. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I have my expectations so low. I will just say, okay, this is an Estonian claymation uh, comedy. Um, and basically how I would describe it is like a more demented version of Wallace and Gromit. Uh, basically, the film starts off with like a kind of like a weird PSA about like the importance of like milking your cows because if not, they'll explode and like basically destroy the country. Um, and the, the basic premise is there are like three uh, brothers who go to stay with their grandfather who on this farm who uh, uh, out in the country and they're kind of like more like city folks and uh, they're going to visit their grandfather who's like a cow farmer and he's like milking these cows but he's very like rough with them and like doesn't really treat his cows well. And then like one day, one of the boys leaves the door open and the cow wanders off and they have to go and try to find the cow and then chaos ensues. And like some of the like young boys are kind of like dumb and like just really like weird. And like there's like another like nefarious guy who's like trying to hunt down the cow and kill it because he's a, like has a vendetta like against this like cows and like the po possibility of them exploding. It's really wild stuff. I will just say this is a very, I wasn't sure what to make of this movie because it is put up, out by Unearthed Films who like, mostly what I've seen from them is like a Serbian film. So I had a level of like craziness to it. I expected. So I was like, is this guy going to be having sex with these cows? What is going on? It didn't get that crazy, but it is a pretty like gross movie overall. Like there's kids playing and like shit and everything and like making stuff and like just the way that the milk looks when it's coming out of like the cow's udders, like basically looks like some uh, different body fluid. I'll just say that. Um, and <laughs> but there's just like a, a weird offbeat sense of humor that really worked for me. Like there's a lot of like social commentary I feel about how like, uh, like workers rights and like how people have to get by in an economy like how the nefarious like evil guy hires these estonian workers who are like out of work and they're just like every single crazy thing that they're asked to do they're like well you got to work and stuff and they just they just carry out their business and everything but it it's very juvenile humor a lot of the time it's very sick humor a lot of times but it's very i found it very funny so I know you and your half star review. Like, if you want to offer a quick rebuttal, go for it. Um, no, it's it's like I I just I definitely um, yeah I this movie I just hated. I it grated on me. It the humor didn't work. It's so ugly looking. I also remember there's like um, maybe like some incest jokes or like implied that uh i 
think maybe a little bit like i think there's like some like entendres yeah yeah uh, and it was like it was just I, I found it like like the some of the sexual humor was really weird because like it did involve kids now they're claymation and i'm like 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 listen i am not somebody you look at the movies behind me i'm not somebody that's like a moral crusader or whatever but even i was like Ugh. like <laughs> and like I, I i can appreciate that this might be some people's humor and it's not necessarily mine um i will say that like it's it's kind of a shame because i love claymation i like kind of grew up on um like claymation specials and all that kind of stuff so i don't know i yeah it, <laughs> it was something i yeah i think now that i'm thinking about it a half star is probably generous it's probably i'm surprised it wasn't like a like i didn't rate it at all but um yeah yeah it's um yeah i'm trying to think it was like one of the festivals that i watched this for and yeah i think i saw that you watched it at like uh fantasia fest last year or something like that uh i yeah. I saw it because I, I went to look to see what festivals it played. I was like, oh, that's probably where they saw it. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it says about me. I did, I just <laughs> I did really enjoy it. It's like really gnarly and like, but and like dark humor. But I really liked it. Um, yeah, it looks was, really good. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say like, I should maybe give it like another chance at some point. But I just don't worry about it just don't worry about it it's fine <laughs> it's just i don't think it's your sense of humor yeah it's fine <laughs> so yeah like like you mentioned like this isn't the most beautiful claymation but it's well done claymation i feel and like it looks really nice and it has both the estonian and english language track stick with the estonian because the english language track does not really sound that great um but it does include like four more shorts like from this like the old man series uh so that's pretty interesting um the other unearthed film which is also distasteful but in a much different way is dr lamb which is a category three hong kong film uh from like 1992 um and this is based on a real life serial killer in hong kong in like 19 early 1980s um and it's i it's basically set up where like at the beginning of the film, this killer is getting uh, arrested because he's like developing these pictures uh, like a photo lab and the technician's like, oh, this is gnarly. I need to tell the police. And then he gets arrested, but then he like goes through and recounts his tales eventually. Um, that's not much of a spoiler, it's real life, but like he, he kind of tells like, what went on and it's like some really gnarly stuff and involving like some mutilation and everything um with this being a category three film like there is a really lot of heinous stuff in this i expected actually worse i guess because i i did just have like a serbian film in my head of just like how bad it could be but like it is really bad and there's like cutting off of like body parts and like sexual assault and everything but oddly not as hardcore as I expected to be. Is it a pleasant movie to watch? No, but I found it fairly engaging as like a dissection of like a Hong Kong serial killer movie is and just like kind of the, the way it was laid out. It kind of like, I found it intriguing, if not enjoyable. Like it, it did what I needed it to do for it to be like a really disgusting, grotesque movie. <laughs> um, I haven't watched that many category three films, but uh, I'll probably watch, not, not that this is inspiring me to go watch more, but I've seen some films coming out that are classified as category three that I'm like, that seems interesting. I at least want to check that out. So I was, I'm glad I checked it out, but it's not something I feel has like a lot of rewatchability, but it's interesting and I think this blu-ray did a really good job of like showing like showing it off it like sounds good it looks good it has a commentary track it has some, like a few featurettes um it's a 2k scan of the uncut version so I think there's probably been a lot of like releases where this has been cut for various scenes of violence but this is the uncut version um and there's even like a featurette on category three films which really helped like educate me a little bit 
So if you're a fan of those types of films and you have been wanting to see this title, this Unearthed Films release of Dr. Lamb, it'll get it'll get the job done. It looks good and it's like a solid release. Yeah, um, that's actually one of the titles that I've like been uh, anticipating because it's not it's not one of my favorite uh, Cat 3 films. I think like Untold Story, if you want to see like, a, I mean, that one's pretty brutal but i think like the stories like above average for those um and then uh vinegar syndrome did ebola syndrome which i think is the same director as um untold story and okay. that one's it's yeah they're definitely a lot um i don't necessarily <laughs> yeah. think you'd, you'd like them but if you were curious about like what maybe like a good category three one like untold story and um unearthed uh also does a really good uh has a really good um cat three documentary and it has um like a lot of like veterans of that of that genre talking and stuff so i thought that was a, a really neat um thing so nice. yeah um no that sounds really cool i know i've seen it before i believe i wrote about that in my book um that's like when I had to get like uh, a multi, um, I don't know, like a probably a Japanese DVD uh, with subtitles to to watch. Um, but now you know, um, and that was like a a really like dodgy DVD. So um, yeah. all you kids, you have it so easy now. Um, <laughs> So my next one is from Mill Creek and it is Paranormal Highway. And um I kind of live for these like cheesy um like documentaries. And I say I use that word very loosely. <laughs> but uh yeah, so these are um like they're they're pretty short. They're um only about like the shortest one is uh 43 um and the longest is like 48 minute long um like um i don't know like the, like i said it's a multi-part documentary series um and if you really enjoy these like cheesy low budget um productions where the interview subjects are way too serious about the subject matter um but come off just kind of ridiculous uh and hilarious then i think you'll really enjoy something like this um it is um i don't know i was a little disappointed because they don't like um the it's not that i i kind of figured the production value was going to be kind of garbage which it is but it um didn't give you enough i guess information that i think would make it engaging at least um even outside of just being kind of cheesy and fun um so it kind of lacked that for me but i think that overall like if you i mean if you enjoy these kind of movies or yeah movies uh these kind of like like I, i'll say pseudo documentary that seems more fair yeah. um <laughs> then you will like uh this for sure it's um i don't know i think my my favorites is the um the haunting and apparition um thing but um i mean i like a good bigfoot documentary as ridiculous as that is so uh yeah it's pretty fun um so uh i'll show you the inside um you know it is just um like the sort of gatefold kind of thing like that and uh yeah so it's just the two discs and it's like the extra alien documentary on there um because this is a limited edition and it will be Ooh. like worth millions someday yeah. <laughs> so um yeah but i mean it looks uh, pretty decent for being dvd um like the quality again is not great um even for um like i mean even with like low budget stuff usually cameras are so good these days that like up converted they'll still look pretty decent and um this didn't look great but it did, doesn't really look awful um you can tell that the cameras they were using were maybe not like 
the greatest. Um, and you can sort of tell when it's up converted like that, but uh, it does the trick. Uh, I'm not looking for, you know, 4K beautiful excellence with my cheesy uh, Bigfoot documentary retrospective. So it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, I kind of, I just, I love um, cheesy dorky stuff like this. So if you kind of like that too, it's, it's, it's good. Again, be warned that these aren't very long. They're like they're under an hour um but for me it just made kind of a breezy day to just binge these so if you look at it like that it's pretty fun um you can play these as one continuous um like playlist um so that's nice so uh yeah it's uh, a good time uh i like when mill creek can put out these like weird things like this um so um yeah it's um it's all right. It's just kind of dumb entertainment. And sometimes you need that. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if this next title, my final title would go under that category, but <laughs> this is like, I, I talk about a Shaw Brothers film every like probably few episodes because they've been releasing so many great titles recently. And it's just like the perfect thing that I like to put on like on a weekday, like a Saturday afternoon. I just like to like, relax to a Shaw Brothers film and just like see some crazy martial arts. And this is no exception. Um, <laughs> this is a uh, flying guillotine part two. Mm. And have I seen part one? Hell no, I haven't. I don't, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just jumping right in. Um, but it sure is a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, it's, so this does have double-sided artwork. Um, so you have here, uh, yeah. And as the back or the back uh, text will say, this is listed. Or Quentin Tarantino says this is one of his favorite films, so you know it's good. Um, <laughs> which, like, yeah, I I love Tarantino and his choice, like his taste in like classic like uh, martial arts films are usually pretty tops. And this was an entertaining film. Um, before I get into it, uh, so. Here's the interior. As usual with 88 films, it comes like with pretty nice package. There's this booklet here. Uh, so there's uh, some artwork and like essays in here. Uh, let me get so like some essays. Uh, and there is a uh, double sided poster that I will. It is basically the cover art I just showed you in poster form, but I will still show it off. Uh, so front cover here and the reversible art here. So dealer's choice, you get to see like all of the uh, stars here. Uh, so that's always a nice touch from 88 Films. I appreciate that. And like I said, the, uh, the booklet, they always include like nice essays that kind of give you some background. So, even if I wasn't completely aware of the Flying Guillotine series, which I was not, um, they do give a little bit of background that like kind of catches me up to kind of see some of the dynamics at play. It's not like a terribly big diversion from standard like issues. There's uh, a uh, opposing forces of just like a uh, like a, a young guy and like a girl like a team of like kind of like female assassins going up against like a tyrannical ruler. I think there's some things carried over from the first film, which I haven't seen, which I don't completely understand, but I just know that there's basically like a evil emperor versus like rising rebellion type conflict going on. And it's pretty entertaining. Basically uh, where this kind of like differentiates itself is the titular flying guillotine. So you have like these crazy like disc like saws that they have on uh, like poles that they kind of like whip at people. And like, there's some like nice shots of like decapitations and like arms being cut off and everything. So it gets pretty bloody, which is pretty fun. Um, you you like to see whenever Shaw Brothers really goes all in on the like over the top violence. And there's some good fighting, there's some good pole fighting and uh, like some really like solid performances overall. Uh, this new release comes with an audio commentary and a trailer. 
so the audio commentary um, is uh, with um, Asian cinema experts Mike Leder and Arn Arn Vanima, uh, which I've seen them kind of repeated on other eighty eight films, like from like the Shaw Brothers films, and they are usually pretty entertaining and informative. So uh, if you have been wanting a solid release of this movie this looks good it sounds good and it's a nice package from 88 films so this is flying guillotine part two nice um yeah that looks cool i know um the first one's really really good you should check it out um i'm trying to think if anyone has put that out yet um but i gotta look, i gotta get on it they, <laughs> i just i jumped right in um but yeah no that's that's awesome um so I definitely saved um, the best for last for me, and that is um, Paths of Glory, um, the Kubrick film uh, on 4K. And um, sit back. And now this is not double-sided. Um, so please be aware this is a, not a dual release. This is just a 4K disc. Um, I know that sometimes varies. Um, I believe that just um, varies from from um, whatever distribution deal they have. Um, but if you have a 4K player, wow, you you need this in your life. Um, so, uh, in my humble opinion, this is one of the great Stanley Kubrick films, uh, and this is really saying something in a sea of amazing films. Um, and I think to say this is a war movie or an anti, I guess an anti-war movie would be more apt, uh, I think is a little bit um, simplistic. Uh, yes, it does take place during World War I, but the movie is a, a um, rich sort of exploration of um, savagery, dehumanizing, uh, and harrowing kind of cost of war. Um, like, th this is not a particularly graphic film, although it's definitely one that is very sobering and chilling and just heartbreaking. Um, you know, there is, um, you know, a pretty, like the pretty famous um, trench scene that has this, um, that amazing tracking shot that is just um, still, I watch it and it boggles my mind, um, like that sequence. Um, you know, Kubrick, before he was making films, he was actually an award-winning photographer. And you can really kind of see how he uses his mastery of the, the camera and these amazing tracking shots and just how he uses um, space. Um, it, it's it's just incredible. Like, I, I love this movie so much. Um, so, yeah, to, to, you know, it absolutely makes my heart sing when when you know, it gets a nice 4K um, restoration. And um, yeah, it's like, I don't know what else to say about this movie. It's just fantastic. Uh, I, I think when, when I talked about the killing, I always kind of look at that as ushering in the kind of the Kubrick as, uh, you know, a force to be reckoned with. But I think this movie... Uh, takes that a step further and it sort of cements his place as a genius American filmmaker. Um, so um, as far as how this looks, um, I think it is a really nice improvement over the previous release um, from Criterion. Uh, speaking of Criterion, um, this does not have um, those features ported over. Um, as I said before, um, typically, um, yeah, double check for me because I don't, yeah, because I was like, I didn't have mine handy, but I know, yeah. Yeah, there's a pretty, like, uh, there's a, an audio interview with Kubrick, a television interview with Kirk Douglas, some, like, other various interviews, and so it seems pretty good assortment, uh, and there's also an audio commentary from Gary Giddens. Do you know if the audio commentary on this one's someone different? Uh, yes, this um, this commentary is uh, Tim Lucas on this on this release. So I'll hold on to this as well as get the new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'm going to do the same. Like I'm going to keep my. I actually, I previously only had this on the the DVD um, Criterion before the Blu-ray. Um, 
So yeah, you if you want the features, um, you might want to just hang on to your criterion. Um, this is it's not that this doesn't have this does this isn't a stacked release, unfortunately, but gosh, it looks fantastic. Um, you know, it is um not perfect, but it, it is really, I think, a step up from the previous release. Um grain isn't too um um heavy but it's still there um, as you were talking about a little bit earlier it does still look have that nice film film grain kind of look um it is nice and crisp looking the black and white contrast is balanced beautifully and it really just showcases again um how visually uh stunning this movie is in black and white and i think it, it it's interesting because there are certain movies that I don't really want to see in color, like Psycho looks amazing in black and white. Uh, and I think this is another one of those movies where I, I have no doubt it would look great in color, but um, there's a stark and grimness to the film that I think, um, you know, uh, utilizes the black and white uh, really well. Um you know, it's like the same thing with like when Sam Fuller does his like war movies, like there's just a heaviness that you you kind of want that black and white. Um, and it, yeah, it, it looks great. Um, and I just, it, it's so amazing how this movie is so efficiently told. It is like not even 90 minutes. And, you know, you get this beautiful uh, piece of art and, and yeah, it, it's great. Kubrick actually met his wife uh, on the set of this movie. Oh wow! That's um, cool. Yeah, so it's um, it's it's fantastic. If you are kind of put off on it because oh, it's like a war movie again, it's more anti-war movie. Um, like the cover really, I mean, the cover really doesn't like give you that kind of nuance, but um i implore you uh check it out anyways like um don't let that kind of dissuade you if, if you're not like i'm not a big war movie uh person but like i i do like how um it really explores these kind of um themes and like you know sadly we lost joel turkle who is in who's um one of the executed men in this and i mean his performance is just haunting and like i'm just getting chills thinking about it it's so good um yeah so uh really fantastic everybody should buy this release do it now um we we say this a lot but if you want the slip cover you're gonna want to get it early um sometimes those go rather quickly so um just really beautiful presentation and just a fantastic movie. And I'm really excited. Um, I know that um, they're planning on doing um, another Kubrick movie in 4K. Um, oh, blanking on the title, but it's his first movie. And Kino put it out. Um, I'll look at it up quick. Um, because that's going to bug me if I don't look it up. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think they said that was going to be like a 2023 release, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, yeah, let me look it up really quick. Um, yeah, because it, it's just been a, like, oh, uh, Fear and Desire is what it is. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's going to be getting a uh, release. You said um, they're um expecting that next year um so yeah we're getting very very close to having his entire filmography on 4k um we're still missing some but um as far as just home video releases i think we have everything in one format or another so um and if i'm wrong on that let me know in the comments because I definitely would like to know. And and like I don't count like short films or like things that are like I'm talking strictly like feature films. Um so uh yeah, um gosh, fantastic movie. Please don't sleep on it. It's great. Um so yeah, um that is everything. Um 
we have a digital code for the new Jurassic Park movie, and you do not want to miss out on that. All you have to do is comment below, and out of all the, uh, let's just say, richly diverse titles that we've talked about, uh, what is your favorite? Uh, what are you most excited for? And uh, we have two codes to give away. Again, that is just the digital codes. It is not the actual physical movie. I just had that to kind of, you know, Vanna White it a little bit, show you uh, what it is. But yeah. uh, I, I just want to interject, like, and also with those digital codes, whenever you redeem them, it does redeem for both the theatrical cut and the extended cut. So you get okay. both versions. So that's also just something to take into account. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, so um, winning those is easy. We're going to be giving out two of those, so you have a pretty good shot. And uh, again, all you have to do is just comment and tell us um, what you what what out of what we talked about you are most excited for, and that's it. And uh, with that, um, you know, I'll give the obligatory: give us a like, a comment, um, and uh, subscribe because we're going to be having some more uh, great uh, episodes and uh, some other really fun uh, things in the works. So you don't want to miss that. And thanks for hanging out with us.